George Foreman says he's had a nice conversation with Deontay Wilder. As you can see here, he says, I had a nice conversation with Wilder. We talked because I was in a position where I lost unexpectedly with the title in Africa. Only I know what he's going through. And that was obviously to Muhammad Ali. He goes on to say he's going to have to live with the Fury loss, but I can show him how to live with that and come back better. We talked a lot on those lines. And he says, finally, that Deontay Wilder can beat Tyson Fury. He says, not only beat him, but he can do it easily. Give him another chance, he'll show you. Now, I think that George Foreman is angling for a trainer or advisor role in the Deontay Wilder camp. I think that's what this is all about because when Anthony Joshua lost, George Foreman offered to train him. I think that George Foreman wants to have one final chapter in his boxing career as a trainer. He wants to taste that glory again. And it's because the heavyweight division is on fire again. It's the first time the heavyweight division has been so interesting for many, many years. And that has sparked the interest of George Foreman <laughs> and he would like to be involved again. He would like to have one last chapter in his boxing career. So I think that's what that is. Does he really believe that Deontay Wilder can beat Tyson Fury easily? I think he believes in the power of positive thinking. <laughs> I would say that. And obviously he was famous for coming back 10 years after he retired in the late 70s. When he lost to Jimmy Young, he then retired for 10 years, became a preacher and a, a Baptist minister and uh, came back in the mid to late 80s, had a couple attempts at the title against Evander Holyfield and Michael, no, Evander Holyfield and uh, Tommy Morrison, which he lost. Then he eventually had his third uh, tilt at the title during his comeback against Michael Mora, and he famously won that fight uh, by a 10th round knockout. So he knows all about comebacks. He knows all about perseverance and one thing about George Foreman, he was, he was certainly a very mentally strong fighter and he appeared to be mentally stronger after his 10-year hiatus than he was prior to it. I think prior to his 10-year hiatus, he was still a little immature. When he came back, he had the maturity, he had more wisdom, etc. He might not have been as good a fighter, but he was you know, mentally stronger and just... Uh, yeah, just just smarter when he came back in his uh, second career, as they used to call it. So he definitely has a lot of experience which he could share with Deontay Wilder. And they talked about you know how to rebound from a loss. And it's interesting that Wilder's actually talking to Foreman. Yeah, it's interesting that he's doing that. To me, that's a good sign that he's listening to some of the old timers because Deontay Wilder has had this attitude like the old timers are... Uh, envious of me and it's a new time and this that and the other and look some of the old timers he's been cool with like Lennox Lewis him and Lewis have always been cool but him and Mike Tyson have had their tension him and Floyd Mayweather have had their tension and uh, I think one or two others but with George Foreman yeah you know it's uh, good that he's reached out to Foreman or allowed Foreman to reach out to him and he's talking to him I don't really think from <sighs> Is there, is there much from a technical point of view that Foreman could teach Wilder? Because they're very different fighters, very different physical ability. One similarity between them is that their technique, their punch technique is unorthodox to say the least. All right, Deontay Wilder's straight right hand is very good and very orthodox. But a lot of the other punches he throws are unorthodox. And George Foreman was an extremely unorthodox fighter. So Foreman didn't have the speed that Wilder has but obviously he had famously heavy hands. He was a tremendous puncher, but he would throw punches in such a bizarre and awkward fashion at George Foreman. I don't know whether that was by design or whether that was just because of his natural body mechanics being a little weird, <laughs> kind of like Joe Joyce, because Joe Joyce is compared to George Foreman in terms of his, his uh, movement. The way he moves reminds you of George Foreman. Not to say that Joe Joyce is anywhere near as good as George Foreman, but I'm just saying the way he moves, it looks like George Foreman. Kind of clunky, throws weird looking punch <laughs> punches, very slow like George Foreman. So 
when you are limited in that way, like Foreman was, perhaps you learn ways to compensate for your limitations. And maybe he could teach some of those ways to Deontay Wilder. Again, they're very different fighters, different builds and and all that kind of stuff. So I I don't know how that would work out. Maybe it's more of a mental thing why George Foreman needs to be brought in. And look, just because George Foreman fought a particular way, it doesn't mean he can't teach other styles of fighting. It doesn't mean he can't teach fighters who have different uh, different attributes to himself. That does have to be said. So anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments section below about George Foreman offering advice to Deontay Wilder. And again, to me, is George Foreman doing it out of the goodness of his heart? Maybe. Um, is he doing it for a check? He's made a lot of money out of selling his grills. He's made a lot of money out of boxing. So unless he's made some really terrible investments, I don't think he's doing it for a check. I just think it's more about George Foreman's ego. And I'm not dissing him for that because in the world of boxing, it's ego driven, not just money driven. Money is a huge part of it, but ego is also a big part of it. If it was all just about money for fighters, then they wouldn't reach the top. Yeah, if, if you're a fighter and you're talented and it's only about money for you, you're not going to get to the top. It, ego has to be involved. You have to want to be the best. You have to love what you're doing and take pride in what you're doing in order to get to the top and stay at the top. So I think George Foreman still has a lot of pride and he wants one last chapter in his boxing career. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section below what's happening about.